four-inch height advantage, and that could be crucial in the fight. Although, for arm length, they measure out equal 22 inches from the armpit to the end of the fist. Both a half pound under the 122-pound limit yesterday. Tonight, as they enter the ring, unofficially on our scale, Martinez will outweigh Romero by four pounds. And now let's take a look at Kiko Martinez. 27 years old from Alicante, Spain. He's managed by middleweight star Sergio Martinez, with whom he shares a trainer, Pablo Sarmiento, and a longtime friendship. Here's a closer look at Kiko Martinez. Well, I met Sergio some, I don't remember how many years, but uh, probably 10 years, 8, 10 years. I met him at a gym where I was training. He saw how I trained, uh, how intense I was, and I liked his style. And it was a, a friendship that developed in Oxnard. What I really liked was the tranquility that is there and the, the, the quality, the, the climate, uh, the focus that you have there. And Sergio has had all his training camps there and in a place that is so focused on boxing. I live with my girlfriend. I have a daughter who is uh, seven months old. The year has been very tough. The training has been very tough. And I've spent very little time uh, with her. I've spent a lot of time away. It's been beautiful the way that they've supported me. Uh, and I do this all especially for my daughter, Adriana. And now Kiko Martinez prepares to enter the ring. In addition to his own professional career, he's also involved in the careers of as many as six Spanish amateur fighters whom he's hoping to help further toward their possible professional ambitions. Of course, everywhere in the world where there's poverty, there are fighters. Spain is undergoing tremendously difficult economic hard times right now. And Martinez says that there's a growing interest in boxing in Spain, largely due to the native-born Argentine who spent so many years fighting in Spain, Sergio Martinez. And now Martinez is in the ring, and we look ahead to Jonathan Romero's entrance. Jonathan Romero is a former Colombian Olympian, making the first defense of his 122-pound title belt. He's known as El Momo, and he's been a fighter since the day he was born. I was born premature. I was born uh, at seven months. And uh, my father believed in, in a saint, a local saint, is Saint Esiomo, he's the black saint. He promised the saint uh, that if I were to survive, that he would give me his name. I am from Cali, Colombia. I was born in the Valley of El Cauca. There was eight brothers and sisters, four brothers, four sisters, and three of the males died and were killed. The eldest, the boy, he was in the military, in the Colombian military. A friend of his, who was going, wanted to steal his weapon, killed him. A second a brother was a boxer. He was one of the best boxers of the Valley of Cauca at that point in time. A friend of his also ended up killing him. And then the youngest one, uh, who was 17 years old, and he joined the FARC, the guerrillas. And he killed a brother-in-law. And because he killed a brother-in-law, he in turn was killed himself. My father, he always pressed me to go into boxing. And I have to thank my father for that. Because if it wasn't for him, I think that I, I could have been dead or in jail. Seven years ago, in an amateur tournament taking place in Colombia, Romero set himself up for a semifinal meeting against the two-time Cuban Olympic gold medalist, Guillermo Rigondeaux. But he suffered an injury in the fight prior to what would have been that matchup, and Rigondeaux wound up taking a walkover. Romero didn't get his chance to meet him. Now let's see if he can use this particular showcase appearance to set himself up finally to get his opportunity to meet Guillermo Rigondeaux. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Revel Casino Hotel 500 Boardwalk, Atlantic City, New Jersey, USA, where tonight Gary Shaw Productions is proud to present an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment, sponsored by Prize Fighter Media, all about sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. At ringside, the three judges scoring this contest will be George Hill, Ron McNair, and Robin Taylor. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee David Fields. And now, Gary Shaw Productions, Samson Boxing, and Thompson Boxing present the co-featured bout of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gray with red, officially weighing in at 121 and one half pounds. His professional record, 28 victories, including 20 knockouts. With four defeats, he comes to us from Alicante, Spain. He's the challenger, Kiko La Sensacion Martinez. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing gold and officially weighing in at the same thing, 121, one half pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 23 fights, 23 victories, including 12 knockouts from Cali, Colombia, the undefeated, reigning and defending IBF Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Jonathan Momo. Gentlemen, we scheduled about 12 rounds for the IBF Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. We've gone over the rules in the dressing room. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Most of all, protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Romero says that he knows it's hard to get the title, it's harder to keep it. Meantime, Kiko Martinez describes his style as a leave nothing for later kind of style. He's going to be there for Romero to hit. He's going to be coming hard. Round one begins. Jonathan Romero comes from one of the roughest neighborhoods in the hemisphere. Already three brothers dead as the result of gunshot wounds. He himself was shot twice a few years ago in a gang-related incident. So he brings a perspective to boxing that is perhaps a little bit more advanced than that of many of his colleagues. It's just a sport to him. And, and even though a lot of his economic life is on the line here, nothing can ever match the loss he has already suffered. Here's the pattern we expected from the fight as Romero tries to create distance and fight from the perimeter. Long arms, a good jab. Martinez trying to get to the body and begin to diminish Romero to the ribcage. It's not that Romero can't fight inside. It's that this is Martinez's difference. He's a distance. He's a very powerful inside fighter. Martinez is much too strong for me now. Oh. He is badly hurt, Romero. Yes, Martinez is much hurt him with a left hook. From the outside, Martinez couldn't do a thing. As soon as the fight moved inside, it looks like Romero's practically out on his feet. And Martinez is much too strong in that point. The body shots are killing him. Tremendous shots to the body. Yes. And he's got Martinez. And he's not he's blocking him. Boy, what is he doing in the corner or on the ropes against this guy, Romero? He's not, he's not uh, very disciplined at fighting inside. He has his hands too wide, so Kiko comes right up the middle. Like that right there, he's taking crazy gambles with his head up. It's very dangerous for him because he doesn't show a lot of experience at this type of fighting. Especially those whistling hooks and right hands. He's a tough kid, though. I don't care how tough you are. Can't last long fighting like this. <laughs> 
Tremendous shots, tremendous execution of the expressed plan by Kiko Martinez. And I'm wondering, when are we going to begin observing that Pablo Sarmiento is one of the best and most creative trainers in boxing? Right now, I suppose, Jim. This might be a good moment. Well, I ain't really counted him out yet, because this boy is throwing some, both of them are throwing really big bombs. Well, I haven't counted him out yet either. <laughs> I just think that that's going to be up to the ref if he keeps fighting with his back against the ropes. That's very true. Martinez and Sarmiento constructed a plan, expressed it to us, and it is being executed brilliantly in this first round. That's a good head move by, by the Colombian. But the, ama wonderful. the amazing thing is how stark the contrast. Fighting at a distance, Martinez can't land anything. Right. And in close, Romero's in deep trouble the whole time. What a round. No. Breathe, breathe. Put his towel on the back, right there. How are you doing, okay? Okay. Did you, did you get the power? He used to a big left hook, followed by an overhand right that grazed him right there. Bam, good left hook right down the middle. That shot hurt Romero very badly. Once again, he was kind of standing straight up. Boom, there's the left hook right down the middle, and I'm very surprised that he stayed on his feet. Romero's had some tough outings. Four fights ago, he was down in the first round against Christopher Avalos out in Santa Inez, California. Rallied to win a 10-round split decision. In his last fight, he fought Alejandro Lopez in Tijuana, Mexico. Fighting a Tijuana fighter in Tijuana, he nevertheless eked out a 12-round split decision to win the title that he brought into this fight. I think the reason Romero's remained on his feet after absorbing that shot is the shot just missed his chin. Hit him a little higher on the face. But as you mentioned, Roy, with his back against the ropes, Romero's chin is up in the air. And if that continues, it's a matter of time. Yeah, now he's doing some beautiful boxing with his feet. He's moving laterally, which is making it a little bit more difficult for Kiko to land those big shots. It's just a matter of how long can he hold this pace up. And it's a matter of did he retreat to the ropes in the first round because he felt comfortable there or because Kiko forced him there? If, he, if it was a shot. choice, then he can do something about it. Another cuffing left hook in there by Martinez. This time, Romero was able to get a little bit of a glove onto it and blunt some of the impact. Romero looks steadier on his feet than you might have expected after the beating he took against the ropes for much of the first round. But as Roy Jones pointed out, toward the end of the round, he began to feature head movement and foot movement that helped to limit the damage. And now in the center of the ring, Romero begins to take over. Nice two one. Very good combination punches, but punching by Romero. I don't see where Kiko is doing anything, Roy, to force Romero to the ropes. He, he seems to be following him more than cutting off the ring. Well, it's not that he's so much as not cutting off the ring. It's just that he's eating long shots when he's following. So it's making it very hard for him to cut off the ring. Right, so why would Romero's back ever be against the ropes nah, in that case? That's true. But sometimes when those legs get tired, that back has to hit the ropes. Kind of early in the fight for that, although Martinez has landed some huge body shots. He landed 40 of 88 power shots by CompuBox count in the first round. So it would be hard to imagine him having the same kind of energy level in this round. Martinez was clearly selling out in the first round after he hurt Romero, thinking he had a chance to go ahead and finish the fight. Great right hand to the body by Martinez there. Samson Lefkowitz, who's Martinez's promoter in Spain, predicts this would be the fight of the night. Um, so far, so good. Good right hand by, by Romero. One of the starkest contrasts we've ever seen between what happens in the center of the ring and what happens <laughs> along the ropes. Two different fights.
August 26. Tune in for Glickman, a documentary film chronicling the life of Marty Glickman, the first athlete turned announcer and a pioneer who overcame prejudice to become a legendary and influential broadcaster, along with being a great friend to the development and the history of HBO Sports. Well, throw, go to the side and look for his back, all right? The jab, the jab. Use the jab. Three punches, one step back and you go. And breathe deeply now. This is going to be the third round. We're going to win. We won this one. Did you hear? One to the side and one to the other side, all right? So Martinez goes to Oxnard, California for a while and comes out and fights a great first round. Seems like every fighter who goes to Oxnard, whether it's the camp of Robert Garcia or down the road, the camp of Pablo Sarmiento, comes away with improvement. Now they're in the corner again. That's where Martinez has had the advantages. Romero gets away to the center of the ring. In the corner, Martinez landed two big body shots. They did. Part of that improvement, Jim, is that there are such great fighters out there that you have to improve to be able to survive. <laughs> well, the sparring they get with each other. Exactly. Good right hand by Romero. One thing that Kiko is doing well, even though he's not cutting off the ring, he's exerting fast forward pressure all the time. Yeah, he's trying, but right now, Romero is on a pretty good boxing rhythm, and he's doing a pretty good job of boxing. Right I don't know how long it lasts, but he's doing a pretty good job of boxing right now. And that's a very small move on. right there. Once he gets too close, tie him up. This is the second time that Martinez has had a chance to show what he can do against one of the rising stars of the division. Two fights ago, he went on the road to Ireland, to Belfast, to fight Northern Ireland star Carl Frampton, and gave Frampton a good run for his money before ultimately getting knocked out in the ninth round. <laughs> Rampin is another 122-pound fighter who you may eventually see in the United States. Another hard right hand shot by Martinez, as once again Romero seemed defenseless against the ropes. You can see from this so far that Kiko Martinez is one of those can't-be-in-a-bad-fight type fighters. Yes, because he's coming, and he's going to hit, and he's going to get hit. Great uppercut inside by Martinez. Oh, good combination. There's a terrific combination by Romero. Maybe his best of the fight so far. I was about to say that with this blunt force attack, Martinez is taking away the volume that might give Romero a chance to separate himself, and then suddenly he threw the four-punch combination. Looks like he has a tender spot outside the left eye, up by the eyebrow, and there's another right hand right on that spot. Breathe. You can't stay there without working. You gotta work, you gotta respond, okay? Don't don't stop working, you gotta work it. Move, move, throw more hands, you gotta do that. Fake him with this hand, up, up and then you repeat it. And then cross him over, right? Don't back up so much, don't back up so much, because he's gonna lose it, he's gonna come on top of you, all right? And look alive when you go out. Careful with that right cross, all right? You understand? Walk to this hand, to this side. Round four begins. 
scheduled 12. As Romero defends the title belt, he won from Alejandro Lopez in Tijuana in his last fight. Steve Weisfeld, our unofficial ringside scorer, how do you have it so far? Jim, after three rounds, I have a 28-28. The first round was definitely overwhelming dominance for Martinez. Overwhelming dominance is usually a combination of number of punches and the impact of punches. And you had that for Martinez in round one. Second round, Romero stayed off the ropes. Third round was close. I thought the big uppercuts by Romero won it for him. So after three rounds, I have it even. That's a great score. When one guy has the other guy walking around drunk, to me, that's a 10-8 round. That's what Martinez had Romero, the kind of condition he had him in his first. Oh, good shot. Is it your take, Max, that not enough 10-8 rounds are scored in boxing? Indeed. Crooked punches hit him flush. See if Martinez still has the energy level he had in round one. Lands the left hook again. He was taking a right hand body shot at the moment that he landed it. face really showing the beating he's taken in those moments against the ropes. Yeah, they did some good work above his left eye between rounds. There's no cut yet, but both eyes are showing the beginnings of puppiness. Yeah, there's some bleeding above the eye, though, Jim. Well, yeah, as of now, you're right. It's cut. And that's why Martinez is targeting him with the right hand upstairs. Oh, good, right up cut. Romero lands his uppercut in the center of the ring. Martinez throws his uppercuts when he gets Romero against the ropes. And now the blood does begin to flow. As Roy joins, Jones pointed out from above the left eyebrow of Momo Romero. Sit, 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 sit. Nothing is wrong. Nothing happened. Left, right, straight shot. And you just were doing that before. Don't go to the ropes either. Don't go to the ropes. Nothing happened. You keep boxing, doing your job. Do your job, do your boxing. That doesn't have to win. He see. Martinez, very close. There was a hit, but that we think may have caused a cut. Looks that way. Yeah, but followed by that. <laughs> later on, you saw this beautiful right hand, then a left hook behind with left uppercut. Left hook right there down the middle. That shot really hurt him. That was the best shot of the fight so far for Martinez. Better than that left hook in the first round? Yes. Power shots in round four. Romero, 19 to 38. Landing half of his power shots. Martinez 24 of 64. He was once again trying to do maximum damage after he got Romero in trouble. For Romero, it's a strategic problem when he's on the ropes. Tactically, he makes Martinez miss a shot, another shot, a third shot. But strategically, he's in the wrong position. The shots are going to keep coming, and some will land. <laughs> should be pointed out that, yes, you could see on the replay that the headbutt caused the cut and produced the bleeding, but that area above the eye was already tender, had been softened up by punches by Martinez, and sort of set up the chance to cause the cut. Mighty shot by Martinez, drives Romero into the corner, and once again, Romero holds on. Martinez throws some wicked body shots. 
Think of how badly Romero had to be hurt to hold that right arm so long after that body shot. I think the blood's bothering Romero a little bit now. He has to get that head down, though. Jim. Romero has some really good feet, and this kid, Martinez, has very big heart and a lot of determination. This always makes for a terrific fight. And it is so far. Martinez exerts tremendous mental pressure, even when he's technically not so proficient because of how so fast he closes in and the constant pressure. A oh, good shot. Art Romero with the right hand again. Misses with those uppercuts, but once again, Romero in a place where he doesn't seem to defend himself nearly as well. His head move is getting better, though, Jim, I must admit. He's using some really good head movement to avoid some really big shots. But I think I agree with Max Roy that he tends to keep his head too high. He does. He's against the ropes. He does. Following this telecast, stick around for an encore presentation of the latest edition of Hard Knocks, training camp for the Cincinnati Bengals. If you want more boxing, check out HBO Latino for Tomas Delorme versus Frankie Figueroa, which took place here earlier this evening. And still to come tonight, our main event in the middleweight division, there's Daniel Giel of Australia making his first appearance in the United States. He has held a middleweight title belt for a couple of years now. He seized it originally from Sebastian Sylvester in Germany, added another belt, beat Felix Sturm in Germany, and here's his opponent tonight, Darren Barker of Great Britain, beaten only once in his career, and that loss was to the reigning legitimate champion of the middleweight division, Sergio Martinez, here in Atlantic City a couple of years ago. Should be a very close, very good fight. Darren Barker of England against Daniel Giel of Australia. Power shots through the fifth round. Romero 70 of 179, Martinez 150 of 280. 115 of 280, that's a connect percentage of 41%. Now Romero getting a little bit better at targeting Martinez off the ropes. Yeah, but he drives him away with the right hand. I don't like him trading with his head that high though, Jim. Yeah, Romero's had his moments, and he's having, he had some then, but who's the one taking the beating so far in this fight? Yeah, the, uh, the simple standard by which Max Kellerman tells us he always judges around, as they walk back to the corner, which one do I want to be? <laughs> and though this is not the way boxing matches are scored so far tonight, I'd rather be Martinez. Oh, that was another hard right-hand shot. And an uppercut that lands for Martinez. Now they're in the part of the ring where Romero does better. More distance, chance to throw his jab, and now Martinez drives him back into the corner again. I'd like to see Romero go to Martinez's body just a little bit now to see if that helps close him down. In it. Good body shot by Martinez. Romero's strategy seems to be reduced to a home run uppercut at this point. Yep. Right hand lands for Martinez. Keep Once it. again, he appears to have Romero and the crowd rises to the occasion. Martinez making a lot of fans in Atlantic City. Tremendous effort. One or two well-placed body shots here will end it. 
Ref wants to stop it now. Kiko, but I mean, uh, Ramirez, oh, good shot. He better punch back for the ref. He doesn't stop it. Two left hooks landing inside for Martinez. He's having another Good tremendous shot. round. What, what heart by Romero. He's got to give it up, son. Every step of the way. You saw Romero's head snap back. And his head snaps back again. Yeah, this is getting dangerous. David Fields is not quick to stop fights. David Fields does not rush to stop a fight. He's going to stop this one. What a win for Rock. Kiko Martinez. Not a moment too soon. What a tremendous win for Martinez. And I'll tell you, you've got to do a lot to get David Fields to stop a fight. And he did. Martinez did plenty. And that was getting lot. very dangerous. A whole lot. A thorough beating of the titleist by the man who now has a title belt of his own, Kiko Martinez. <laughs> and once again, I point to the brilliant game plan Pablo Sarmiento talked Kiko Martinez into using, and he used it so well. And somewhere, his manager, Sergio Martinez, is rejoicing as well. Kiko Martinez closed the show landing 42 of 75 power shots in that round. Referee has to be commended. He gave him every chance to try to defend himself. You must commend the referee because he was champion. He did allow the champion an opportunity to defend himself. <laughs> Well, I think the, the line that Steve Weisfeld used for me before the fight was David Fields tends to allow a fight to progress all the way to its logical conclusion. And that is another way of saying what you're saying, Roy, that he went all the way to the logical conclusion of the fight. Yeah, and in a championship fight where the champion is losing, I think the champion deserves that. Particularly if he's had moments, as Romero did in the fight. It wasn't as if he was out of it all the way. Most definitely. But Martinez simply managed to keep crowding him against the ropes and keep putting him in jeopardy in the place where Romero didn't want to be. Here's yeah, he another had look on, at the end of the fight. He had him on the ropes. That was a beautiful right hand, right on the chin. Um, Kiko just you. kept the pressure up. He knew he had him hurt. You don't see Romero going low, rolling with his head, probably because he was weak and tired. He was trying to lay something back, but the Kiko just kept the pressure on, like the shorter man is supposed to do. Keep your head in his chest and just keep Behind working you. until the referee stops it. Beautiful stoppage by the referee at a great time. Here you see it again. Romero really had no true defense. He was trying his best. He showed the heart of a champion, but Martinez was just a little too powerful. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars okay. on the stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, referee David Fields has to step in and call a halt to the bout. The official time, 2 minutes 40 seconds, round number 6. The winner by TKO victory and new IBF Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Kiko La Sensacion Martinez. When you're finished, copy box numbers in the fight. Romero landing 126 out of 380, not bad. Kiko Martinez throwing at a rate of about 90 punches per round, pressing the issue all the way, landing 34% of those 525 punches, got the better of it. Power punches. Martinez nearly doubling Romero in that category, as virtually everything he threw once he got the distance he wanted was a power shot. And Romero landing only 37% of his power punches compared to 45% for Martinez. And CompuBox Punch Zone will give you a look at where those punches landed during the fight. And you see that uh, 26 body shots landed on Kiko Martinez whereas 68 body shots landed against Romero. You saw all the spectacular left hooks and the uppercuts that landed upstairs, 
but from the beginning on, those body shots were the undercurrent of the fight, and they helped Martinez to develop the momentum and also to get the positioning and the distance he wanted to beat Jonathan Romero. And now Max Kellerman stands by with a new 122-pound titleist. Congratulations on a sensational performance. You just entered the boxing world stage in a big way. What are you thinking about right now? Pinch me, pinch me please, because this is a dream for me. HBO, HBO, seeing you and tra you transmitting this fight, I always watch you all the time. Ha dicho mi nombre. El comentarista con Michael Buffer. Michael, Michael Buffer called out my name. No me lo creo. I just can't believe it. No me lo creo. I can't believe it. Eh, esto es un sueño para mí. Estoy súper feliz. Eh, eh, This is a dream. I'm super happy. No tengo palabras. Estoy muy emocionado. Eh, lo único que quiero es ver a mi hija mañana el lunes y darle un beso y decirle que lo he conseguido a mi familia. I have no words, but but all I want to do is give my daughter a kiss when I get back there on Monday, and and I I've made it. Okay, early in the fight in the first round, from a distance, he seemed to be getting the better of things. Then on the ropes, you started to beat him up. How did you get him to the ropes? Eh, porque Pablo me estaba pinchando con un palo detrás. Y, y era o pincharme con el palo o pegarle. Y digo, voy a pegarle porque me, el palo, Pablo me va a pinchar luego con el palo. Pablo, Pablo was poking me with a stick from the corner, you know, and what's worse, poking with a stick or attack the rival? So I'd rather attack the rival than get poked by Pablo. <laughs> as, as you were coming in, he would load up on the uppercut and he seemed to hit you pretty hard with it a couple times. Were you ever hurt? Sí, me pilló. No, no he lastimado, pero como me lo estaba repitiendo, le estaba esperando para meterle una contra mía. He, he did hit me, but it wasn't hurt, but I was waiting for it so that I can counterattack that. Once you had him hurt in the final round, you were, you just kept punching hard shots. Did you think that you had to finish it then? Sí, tenía que seguir, tenía que seguir sacando malos porque no estaba contestando a los golpes y sabía que más tarde o más temprano el el árbitro le tenía que parar la pelea. I knew I had to do it. I knew I had to keep throwing those punches because he wasn't responding, and I knew that sooner or later the referee was going to have to stop the fight, which he did thankfully. What are your plans now? Who do you want? ¿Quién quieres ver? Quiero ver a Donito Donaire. Quiero enfrentar. Quiero enfrentarme con Donito Donaire. Donito Donaire, that's who I want. I want to face him. Sí. Well, that would be something. Congratulations again. Tremendous fight. Jim.